Hey there, everyone. Mary Cristelli from PCC Wellness and Recreation back uh, in the new year. So happy new year, by the way. We're here at the Lucero branch of the Pueblo City County Library District uh, for another section of Wellness Where You Are. So this evening, we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions um, or goals or intentions, whatever you may call them. But just for tonight, um, for the ease of the conversation, I am going to call them resolutions since that's what most uh, that's most commonly what we think of when we think of it. So this is the time of year when many folks sit down, um, myself included, and think about what are the things that we want to work toward or try and accomplish this year. Um, and if you're anything like me, sometimes we get a month into it or a few months into it or near the end of the year and realize like I've either not made any sort of um, action or movement on that resolution or I've abandoned it altogether or I've really struggled with it. So I wanted to talk about that because I think it's really important that we move through this process. And I know that um, most of us who've set those <laughs> resolutions have already done so, but I don't think that it's ever too late to start. So I think that it's really important to move through that process. So you can just examine those goals if you've already written in those resolutions um, or you know, think about them with a healthy mindset. So if you haven't written them and you're still like putting a lot of time and thought into it to kind of figure out like what is it that I really want to, to approach that with a healthy mindset. So to start, uh, some people might say, I don't even know if they work. How, I mean, you started this out, Mary, by saying that many people, yourself included, might get toward the end of the year or partially into it and not have started something or anything like that. So how effective are they? Do they really work? Um, and the answer is yes, of course, if we stick to them, we can engage in a behavior change process, but there is research out there, psychological research out there that has shown that people who just set resolutions are 10 times more likely to change a behavior than those who don't even do it at all. And that um, some studies have shown that about 40% of folks are effective at, at modifying at least one behavior when they set a resolution. So yes, they are effective. They do help us, um, even if that is putting us into a mind frame of, I am going to engage in some sort of behavior change. So perhaps we don't like achieve the whole goal that we were wanting, that we set out at the beginning of the year to achieve, but I bet if you look back on some of the resolutions that you have set in previous years, if you've done so, that you might see little elements where you've taken small steps toward achieving and accomplishing um, or seeing through a resolution that you've set or achieving a goal that you've put, put out for yourself. So maybe it's not what it, you put down on paper, but there might be a way that you've done it. So yes, they are effective, um, even in that way of switching our mind in a psychological way. Second thing would be when we're looking at it from a more healthy perspective is what are the things that get in the way of our success? Why are they so challenging? Why are they things that, <clears throat> excuse me, that we might not end up seeing all the way through? So what are those barriers? Um, and the first big one is that it's approaching it. We oftentimes approach these from a negative perspective. So we set them out of obligation. And that sets us up to feel kind of dreadful about it. So we pick things that we feel like we have to change or that society would be most more like appropriate or acceptable or whatever that might be if we change X about ourselves. And we're not really looking at it from a place of what, what do I want to see be different in my life? You know, instead of looking at like, what does society say I should set my, my resolution for? You know, maybe a lot of folks put on there to lose weight. That's a huge one. Or go to the gym more. Is that something you're putting on your list because you want to do that? Or is that something that you're putting on your list because that's just what we put on our, our New Year's resolutions list? So kind of walking it back from obligation and really looking at it about like, cool, what do I want to do it and what will be exciting and fun for me? Um, like I mentioned uh, a bit ago, is that sometimes we, we approach it with a sense of dread of, oh my gosh, this is not going to be fun. This is something I have to do. It's a chore. It's a task. And oh my gosh, I have enough things to do to check off my list as just in life in general. I, I just added another thing. So we dread things. Um, we oftentimes spread ourselves too 
So we set a whole bunch of goals. And then it's like, I don't know where to choose, which to pick and how to, how to navigate this. I've got so much, I feel overwhelmed. Maybe we're setting lofty goals. So there's nothing wrong with setting big long-term goals and like trying to have that big dream achieved and accomplished. Um, and that when we're setting those resolutions, sometimes we might pick to do something that's gonna take a few years and we're resolving to accomplish it in one year. So maybe we need to adjust our timeline and say, okay, in this in 2021, I'm gonna do this. This is my resolution. Um, this is a five year long goal. So in 2021, how am I gonna, what am I gonna do to work toward that? So kind of seeing, am I making something huge and trying to drop it into one single year into a 12 month term period because that can feel overwhelming and make us feel defeated. Um, another piece is that we may not, plan. So creating a good plan for yourself and kind of how you're going to, what steps you're going to take to get through to the end of that and kind of see that resolution through. So we'll talk more about this in a minute, but starting at the end. So what's my big thing? What's the resolution that I put on my list? And what are the in-between things? I'm going to work my way backward through that. And I'm going to say, okay, what do I need to do in between now when I start and the end of the year when I have my, my date of like, my end goal date, um, and work on that in between. So making a plan for yourself and not just making a plan of what steps do I need to take, but, and I cannot stress this enough because I think it's really, really huge. Thinking about what are the things that I have inside me? What are some internal strengths, strengths that, that I have, that you have, um, within you that will help you achieve it. We all have them. Even people who may not be able to see them, we all have inner strengths. We all have some qualities and traits and characteristics about us that can help us achieve things. So writing those things down, are you someone who is determined, who sets goals or resolutions or whatever those might be, and you see things through no matter what? Are you a determined person? Are you committed to the things that you say you're going to do? Do you, um, are you a planner? Do you have a good foundation of that kind of stuff? What are some of those things that already exist inside you that you can tap into for the success of that. Um, and then also looking at what kind of obstacles, what kind of barriers are going to pop up and making plans for how you're going to navigate challenges and barriers within that one resolution that you're looking at. The last thing that can get in the way is a lack of support. And that can be overwhelming. If you are trying to do something that you maybe you need, that you, if you live with a, you know other people in your household and you're doing something that it would be much easier or you're going to have a much higher rate of success in seeing it through if you have the support of the people in your household and no one is supporting you that can be really challenging and it can it, it can definitely get in the way and impede your progress so if that sounds true to you find your people who are going to be super supportive um, we all have them we just have to find them and in those moments where you're really feeling like man i'm not going to be able to keep this up help them, let them help hold you accountable in a way that's going to be positive and loving. Um, we don't want our accountability folks to be demeaning or anything like that. We want them to be cheerleaders to us. So those are some of the big barriers that stand in the way. Uh, <clears throat> so once we look at, okay, yes, they work. There are some things that stand in our way of success and that's, that's okay. These are just, these are just facts. Um, how do we shift our mindset? There are some things that we want to do to kind of just move that over a little bit. So, of course, addressing some of those barriers that we have, but changing the way that you see this opportunity. Um, once we've developed a resolution set, a goal, or anything like that from a place of, um, when we set them out of obligation, it's, it's kind of hard to change this mindset and to really look at it from a more positive place. So we want to... Pick goals that are meaningful to us and shift the way we look at it from a, from a place of I have to, to one of I get to. Um, and so how do we do that? So I used some that I picked some that are pretty common. So that just so that it was kind of easy, everybody's got their own thing. So if none of these are true for you, think of the, your own get to. They're going to be very personal. But if your resolution is to lose weight in 2021. Instead of saying like, oh man, I have to lose weight. 
change it to something more positive, like I get to develop a healthy relationship with my body. Um, and that might seem really big to some folks. So I get to, to increase my self-confidence. A lot of times we aim to adjust and alter our body weight because we want to feel good about the skin that we're in. And that really impacts the way that we feel about ourselves. So if that's one of yours, shifting it to a place of like I get to increase my self-confidence. I'm going to do that. Up arrow, self-confidence. And then we're starting to kind of shift our mindset and really get to a healthier place. So another one that folks do is like, I want to be more organized. I got to do this. My house is a disaster. My workspace looks chaotic. I can't stand it anymore. I can't find anything. And we live in a society that's very big on minimization right now. So this might be one that I totally spelled that wrong that uh, you may have on your list. It's a very common one. So <clears throat> I have to be more organized. That's not super positive to me, um, but I get to eliminate clutter. For me, that's huge. <laughs> I don't like visual chaos. So for me personally, eliminating clutter feels really nice. Um, or when we are more organized, we spend less time digging through things or running around trying to get to places on time. So we save time. So instead of I have to be more organized, I get to save time that I would otherwise spend looking for things or, or shuffling through papers. So finding what that I get to is for yourself. Um, I'm going to put eliminate clutter on here because that's uh, quicker. But keep in mind, these will be super personal to you. Um, I have to exercise more. So I personally love movement. So this one is like, yeah, as much as I can do, I love. Um, but you might look at them and like, man, that is not fun for me. Um, so I have to exercise more to, if you're someone who has previously exercised, where you played a sport when you were younger or something, and you haven't engaged in that in a long time, but you know you really love it, um, I get to fall back in love with this thing I enjoy. So if you used to run or ride your bike, it would be I get to fall back in love with running or with cycling or finding a community like a rec basketball league, which might not be a thing right now because of COVID, but uh, just for the sake of the example, <laughs> like I get to fall in love with basketball again. Um, or if you're brand new to it, you're like, yeah, I've never really exercised before. I've, I've been interested in it, but not really. So saying... I get to learn my body's strength and capabilities. Um, for me personally, that's one of the things that I, I love about fitness and movement and exercise. Is I'm, I constantly get to see like, what is my body capable of? So I'm gonna put that what my body's capable of. What my, my body can do. And last one example, well, uh, example that I've got for this piece is I have to spend less money. Um, that can feel kind of a bummer because that kind of that might take away some of the fun things that, that you're looking at in your life. So I get to build my savings. Are there things that you want to do in the future that having more savings can help you do? Would it just make you feel a little bit more at ease? Um, or I get to eliminate or reduce my debt. So finding the things that have meaning to you and changing it from this to this. So I'll just put build savings here. That's how I abbreviate it. So shifting that mindset to one that is of more of like abundance. This is adding to your life. This I have to oftentimes makes it feel like we're taking things away. And really when we're engaging in long-term behavior change and we're looking at like we're trying to establish lifelong behaviors. These are things we're going to take small steps so that we can build them over time. Um, and looking at it from like, man, how is this going to enhance my life? What is this going to do in a positive way? So really going for that, I get to. Um, I just mentioned this, but instead of with, sometimes we get a little bit overwhelmed. So setting small steps, so taking it in small pieces instead of looking at it from the whole thing. Um, quick example would be if you're wanting to exercise more, is that like, if your goal is to eventually be going to the gym five days a week, um, if you're starting out and you haven't been to the gym at all in a while, or you haven't done any sort of exercise in a very long time, Five days a week might not be something you can take on right now, but if you take it in small steps, so it's like, okay, for the first four to six weeks, for the month of January, 
I'm going to work out. I'm going to go for a walk twice a week. That can, might seem more doable to you. So breaking it down and up into smaller steps that feel more manageable to you, that build on top of each other. That's another way that we can reduce some of that sometimes crushing overwhelm. And then the last piece of shifting your mindset is attaching these resolutions or goals to your personal values. So we all have things that really matter to us and that, that drive our decision making and the, and the way that we live our lives. And those are our values. And so looking at how does this resolution or goal or intention, how does it align with my personal values? Because when it's attached to our values, we're more likely to see it through because it has deep meaning to us. So some folks might want to make changes to like be more expressive. If um, you struggle with communicating your feelings and you're like, yeah, I, I want to, I want to do that. I want to express myself. I feel like I, I'm, I'm walked all over, pushed around because I don't, I don't share what's going on inside. I don't stand up for myself. That's like self-expression. So a value or excuse me, having a resolution or a goal to express yourself more might align with a value of honesty. So if you personally value honesty or trust or, or even communication can be a, a value, um, that is how you can tie it to that. It might also align with a value of courage. Because this can be incredibly vulnerable and it can be challenging. And I think that when we do express ourselves, especially when we do it in a healthy and appropriate way, we're engaging in an act of courage. So that's one example. Um, if you had a goal, if you wanted one of your resolutions was to spend more time with loved ones, the value of this, you could attach this to um, if family is one of your values, time with family. So you can attach it that way. Um, to resume an old or pick up a new hobby, a value for this one could be passion. And I'm just doing a bunch of different types of examples because, you know, we have lots of different people hopefully watching this who might have different interests and stuff. Um, and so that, that hobby thing could be passion or your interest or whatever that might be. And then if stress reduction, some form of reducing your stress levels is the resolution you have, it could be attached to a value of peace, like inner peace um, in your own life or mind. It could also be attached to a value of health because lower stress levels have a big impact on our physical health as well. So um, when we're looking at shifting our mindset, trying to find a way of like, how am I adding to my life and how am I how am I aligning this with who I am as a person in the way that I want to be? The final piece, number four, on um, shifting your mindset about your resolutions and setting yourself up in a, in a positive, loving way to kind of move through this is to, and I say this with everything I do because it's so, so, so important, and I think we're really hard on ourselves, is to be kind to yourself. Um, really, like, remind yourself that it doesn't take a month, a week, a day, a year to um, get into these these behaviors that we find undesirable, that we're not pleased with about ourselves. And so it's going to take more than a month or a week, and in some cases even a year, to learn new behaviors and to really establish those as like deeply worn pathways that we're in. So we will have times where we'll slip out of this new behavior that we're trying to work our way into, that we're not trying, that we're actively working our way into. And so in those moments, like take a deep breath, acknowledge that you've slipped back into a really well-worn pattern, um, and then slide back over into the new one and just be kind to yourself and compassionate and say, like, okay, I'm okay. It doesn't undo everything. I didn't just walk back all of my success. It's totally okay. Um, and I'm just going to keep moving forward from here. And that's where, when we're in that planning process, we want to make sure that we are uh, making a plan and identifying some ways that we, like some challenges we might face and how we might jump back and, and get around those. Um, I hope this is helpful. It felt like a timely, relevant topic to discuss. I really hope it was helpful to you this evening. I hope that everyone watching had, and everyone in general, but definitely all of you watching, had a really, really wonderful holiday season. 
um, and that if you had an extra time off that you enjoyed it um, and were able to in some way communicate with loved ones, I will be back in a couple weeks with another Wellness Where You Are. Uh, good luck on your New Year's resolutions, goals, and intentions. Uh, take good care of yourself.